Use a pair of scissors to cut up the mould along the guide lines. The mould parts can then be matched up into pairs and will clip together using the studs so the moulded paste will pick up markings on both sides. The bird's mould is also cut up so 3D bodies can be modelled. To make the larger of the two doves, you will need to use the medium tail and either the medium sized closed or open wing. Roll out a little 50-50 mix of flour and sugar paste. One side should remain thicker, the other side made reasonably thin in comparison. The thicker paste should be placed towards the V of the tail. Make sure to trim the paste if the studs have been covered. Lock the mould halves together using the studs and press them together so the paste picks up the mould markings. Trim away the excess from the sides of the tail as well as the V using plastic knife so that the mould is not damaged. Use the point of the knife blade to drag and pull away the excess paste at the base of the tail to give a feathered effect. Remove the tail from the mould and pinch so that it bends. Lay over a ridge, for example, the edge of a cell pad, so it dries curved. If you wish to create a fan tail, which is a common feature of the dove, place the partially dry tail on the foam surface of the cell pad. Take the wider end of the Dresden tool, press down gently on the paste and drag across the edge of the tail to thin. Tilt the fluted end and support on a former and set aside to dry. If you wish to make a bird with a long tail, take the larger size of tail, mould and then trim away the sides of the tail. Elongate a piece of paste into a shape similar to that of the medium dove cavity. Place the paste into one side of the mould and ease the paste to make sure it has filled the cavity. Clip the second side on top using the studs. Firmly press the mould parts together. The excess paste will be squeezed to the outer edge of the bird body. Use the plastic knife to trim away the excess paste.
Replace the mould top and press again as many times as necessary. Smooth any ridge present with your fingertips. Alternatively, use a Dresden tool. Remember to reshape if you distort the soft body while smoothing. Use a fine knife to cut a small opening at the base of the bird body. Brush a little water into the opening. Insert the V of the tail and use the Dresden tool to blend the join between body and tail both on the top and bottom. Soften some sugar paste and make into a sticky gum by mixing in a little water or egg whites. Add some of this gum into a channel cut into the side of the bird body. Insert the dried open wing into the groove. Check the angle of the wing and then fill the groove above the wing with more gum. Leave to dry before adding more softened paste as required. Texture using the Dresden tool to create a feathered effect. Add some softened gum onto the side of the bird body. Attach a soft wing with the shorter feathers to the top. Make sure the paste curves around the body and does not stick out stiffly. Press the front edge to make sure the wing bonds well. Repeat for the other side making sure the wings are stuck in a similar position on each side. The bird moles can be used to make a rent. A blue tit. A robin, an owl, and two sizes of dove. You can always use the moles for alternative species. Try larger or smaller wings with hand modelled bodies. Explore the possibilities. A little vegetable fat is added onto the tip 
of a firm bristle brush. Pick up a few grains of dusting colour and mix the two together by rubbing on a piece of paper towel. Use the creamy beige colour to create a base on both the body and the wings. Take some chestnut brown mixed with a tiny bit of fat and paint over the top of the beige to give a lightish colour, fading towards the chest and neck area so the colours blend together. Once you have a base coat on the top of the head, body, tail and wing, use a little more chestnut colour to introduce darker tones. Often by stippling, greater localised colour intensity can be achieved. Use a piece of paper towel to hold the robin so you do not smudge the chestnut colouring. As before, add fat to the powder before painting the reddish breast. Where possible, start with lighter tones and apply extra colour to achieve greater intensity and add dimension. Complete by painting in the eye. 